Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure as the new president of the Academy of Science to get our event started today. May I offer a particular welcome to new fellows who will be introduced tomorrow into the Academy of Science. C'est le plus grand taux de participation que nous avons eu cet événement, et nous sommes heureux de que un si grand nombre d'entre vous soit ici. This event has been made possible through an old friendship, as well as a new friendship, the old friendship which has been gaining strength for many years is with the University of Calgary, which is the weekend's presenting this sponsor, which is presenting this weekend's sponsor. The new friendship is with the Canadian Science Publishing, which many of you have known for many years as the NRC Research Press. We are grateful to CEO Cameron McDonald and to Professor Bruce Danick, who will bring greetings from CSP in just a few minutes. Prior to beginning the scholarly program this afternoon, May, may I invite President McCauley, himself a fellow of the Academy of Science, to bring greetings on behalf of the University of Calgary. Thanks, Keith. Um, I'm Ed McCauley, the Vice President of Research at the University of Calgary. And on behalf of the University of Calgary and our President Elizabeth Cannon, I bring greetings to you and welcome you to the Academy of Science New Fellows presentation here at the newly renovated Cape and Basin. It's good to see many friends and colleagues in the audience. Um, the University of Calgary is a very proud supporter of the Royal Society of Canada, and we are also very proud to be this year's presenting sponsor of the AGM, along with the government of Alberta through uh, the Ministry of Enterprise and Advanced Education. I'd like to welcome fellows and award winners from universities across the country, along with those interested members of the public who are joining us today. We are so pleased that the Royal Society chose Banff as the first destination for the AGM on the road, and even more delighted to have received an invitation to serve as the presenting sponsor of the weekend. Je veux souhaiter la bienvenue à tous les nouveaux membres de la Société Royale du Canada. Congratulations to each of you for the excellence you represent, and as a member of the Academy of Science, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 2013 New Fellows presentation. We look forward to innovative and some stimulating discussions and presentations from our new fellows this afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much, Vice President McCauley, for your personal as well as your institutional support. I would now like to invite Bruce Stanzig, Editor-in-Chief of NRC Research Press Journals, to bring greetings on behalf of the Canadian Science Publishing and to provide an overview of its current and most exciting initiatives. Please. Thank you. It's my great honor here to be here today representing Canadian Science Publishing, which many of you know as uh, the NRC Research Press. It was about 10 years ago that I stood in front of a crowd of scientists and colleagues at the uh, Sisti Library on the old NRC campus in Ottawa. It was on the occasion of the 75th anniversary of the NRC Research Press Journals. I began my remarks that day by quoting Dr. Henry Marshall Torrey, who was instrumental in launching the Canadian Journal of Research back in 1929, along with initiating lots of other things. He was also founding president of uh, my institution to the north, the University of Alberta, my, where my day job is. Torrey believed that a Canadian journal was necessary as he felt that Canada would never get recognition scientifically until we had some science journals of our own. Since that anniversary celebration, the press has seen great change. From print only to fully electronic publications, adopting various new technologies, and significantly, most significantly, a move from the public to private sector when the NRC's mandate dramatically changed and a, de a decision was made to privatize the journal publishing operations. In, 19, in uh, 2010, excuse me, Canadian Science Publishing was born with the mission to continue delivering quality science to the world, but now as an independent, not-for-profit publisher. With an eye to remaining a leader in the publishing community in Canada, 
we also remain committed to the research community. We have begun to forge new paths and partnerships, supporting the research community with sponsorship for important events such as this one, as well as symposia, conferences, awards, and more. We published 16, and in a few months we'll announce the 17th, journals led by a team of uh, esteemed editors, including several who too are fellows of the Royal Society of Canada. One is being inducted uh, uh, at, at these meetings uh, tomorrow. Our journals have published many highly cited papers, including uh, these gems, which aren't on the screen right now, from the past decade you may recognize. Uh, the famous Tuzo Wilson paper, A Possible Origin of the Hawaiian Islands in the Canadian Journal of Physics in 1963, which confirmed continental drift and plate tectonics and had been rejected by uh, the top US journals at the time. Uh, the behavioral decisions made under the risk of predation, a review and prospectus by Lee Mandill in the Canadian Journal of Zoology in 1990. That is the second most cited paper in the decade of the 1990s in the general very broad field of ecology. Very proud of that one too. Uh, the third one I'm mentioning, which still isn't on the screen, special issue of uh, 40 years of aquatic research at the Experimental Lakes area by David Schindler. And of course the Experimental Lakes area has been much in the news thanks to our politicians in the last uh, uh, several months. Where will the next one come? Maybe from this paper or others on the boreal forest in an upcoming issue of Environmental Reviews. I might also mention that uh, Botany and the Canadian Journal of Forest Research in uh, 2009 were named among the 100 most influential journals of the past century uh, in biology and medicine by the St Special Libraries Association. I might also mention that our Canadian Journal of Chemistry won the first uh, CAS, the Chemical Abstracts uh, uh, Service uh, Science Spotlight Award in 2002 for the most requested paper in that uh, in that first year of operation that they that uh, they they did this. We've come a long way thanks to the support from you who continue to read, cite, and publish in the NRC Research Press journals, our national scientific treasures. On behalf of the entire organization. We congratulate the new fellows, and I sincerely thank the Royal Society of Canada for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Danzig. With these expressions of gratitude complete, we will now turn to the scholarly portion of this afternoon's program. The format is as follows. There will be four speakers, one representing each of the four divisions of the Academy of Science. Each presentation will be followed by questions and answers, the length of which depends on the length of the presentation. Don't put your students to sleep, right? We intend to finish the program on time so you can enjoy a free evening in downtown Banff or at the host hotel. The shuttle will be departing at 6.30 and will make one stop downtown and continue to the Fairmont where you will have restaurants for you to choose from. How many today, by the way, are new fellows? Oh, so quite a few, more, more, well more than half. Well, let me then, if we could just congratulate everybody once again, and I guess you'll have the cere formal ceremony tomorrow. I would now like to invite Jamel Dean, Director of the Division of Applied Science and Engineering, to introduce Brahmin Bemelkreen, our afternoon's first speaker. Jamel. Uh, thank you very much, Keith. Uh, my name is Jamal Dean. I'm from McMaster University. And today I have the great pleasure and honor to introduce the first speaker, uh, Professor Brahim ben i uh, just give you a little bit of his background before he begins. Uh, he obtained his BSc from Ecole Polytechnique um, in Lausanne, his master's and PhD from Sherbrooke. And uh, he's a specialist in the use of innovative materials, in particular advanced fiber reinforced materials in construction. Um, some of his notable achievements include the following. He pioneered the first two concrete fiber-reinforced polymer bridges 
in Canada and the USA. This is really a phenomenal achievement. Um, he's had really a stellar career at the University of Sherbrooke. Uh, he's won many, many awards. Uh, for example, the Ensorg Synergy Award for Innovation, the CSA Award for Merit. He's a fellow of four societies, including the Canadian Society for Civil Engineering and the Canadian Academy of Engineering. He's published 330 scientific articles, 12 book chapters, and 175 technical reports, many of which have become standards in the industry. Uh, he's also um, achieved a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal success in terms of research funding. He's had more than $11 million in individual research grants in the past 20 years, and more than $15 million in group research grants, also in the past 15 years. Uh, he supervised many, many students, more than 90 uh, graduate students and postdoctoral fellows in the last 12 years. And he's really uh, someone who symbolizes the kind of person we, we're electing as a fellow within the Division of Applied Science and Engineering. So again, it's my great pleasure to, to introduce to you Professor Brachmin ben Mercran. Please. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. So, um, first of all, really, I'm very, very pleased uh, to be here today and to give you this presentation. And also, uh, I'm feeling really very honored by the uh, Academy of, of uh, Science and also by the Engineering Division uh, for choosing me for, to give this uh, presentation. Uh, I am, as you can see, I am from uh, University of, of Sherbrooke. And uh, tonight, my uh, or, my talk will be regarding the. Uh, okay, so I have to stay here. <laughs> Maybe I can talk from here. Can you hear me from the back? No. Okay. So because I don't have any any. Okay, I will I will do it in this way. So my talk today will be on uh, mainly on, on on civil civil engineering, of civil infrastructure and mainly about the deterioration and the uh, solution that we are proposing uh, from our uh, research uh, by using this kind of material. Uh, as it was mentioned, um, I am fellow of this, all the societies, but mainly now with the Royal Society, I think it will be the, the most <laughs> in, at the beginning. Also, I am uh, uh, holding Canada Research Chair in, this, uh, in Advanced Composite Materials, um, and also I have Ansel Industry Chair and Director of the Quebec uh, FQR Research Center on uh, this uh, topic. So uh, uh, this is giving uh, an idea about my university education. Uh, 86 PhD, 83 master, and uh, 79. I got my uh, um, civil engineering bachelor from uh, uh, Ecole Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne uh, in Switzerland. Uh, this is showing my uh, employment. Uh, but mainly here about the director of the FQ event, Chiwal Canada Research Chair, and Cirque Industry Chair, and, and, and so on. So it's, uh, it's like a uh, normal achievement. Uh, this is about the research activities, as it, as it was just mentioned before. Uh, here I'm giving an idea about my actual research group. Uh, it has about uh, um, uh, 22, 23 uh, personal research, which includes 16 graduate students, uh, uh, three postdoctoral, two technician, and so on. Uh, during the last uh, uh, four years, I am showing that because in Quebec with the FQMT, we are all the time reporting uh, every four years. So I, gra I graduate uh, uh, 16 uh, graduate students, nine PhD and seven masters, um, which is my university is very, very happy to have me because, as you know, uh, uh, I, I can tell you during the last uh, few years, only with the masters and PhD students, I really I brought uh, maybe 10 or even more million for my university. So uh, they would like to keep me at least will be ongoing for the next uh, 10 years and also achieving the same, uh, same thing. Uh, this is about the um, uh, papers. And, but mostly, uh, most importantly is um, I have really very, very strong collaboration and you will see it later, mainly with the, uh, with the Canadian industry, US industry, uh, European industry and also ASEAN industry, Australian industry, and also working uh, very closely with, uh, uh, with um, uh, ministries. Uh, you will see really, um, uh, with, through my collaboration and through my research, uh, I, I really changed many things uh, through these ministers in terms of using new materials. And the main, for the main thing is, of course, to, uh, to enhance the, uh, uh, 
uh, the, um, uh, the, the relation of structures and, and so on. Uh, this is kind of uh, problems that we have here in Canada, uh, dealing with the infrastructure, as you can see, for uh, bridges, uh, and this is mainly due to the corrosion, because as you know, concrete, concrete is very, very good material when it's subjected to compressive loadings. But when it's subjected to tensile loading, uh, it will crack at very, very low load. So we have to put some reinforcement to take this tensile load. And the reinforcement used for many, many years, it, it, it's, it's been made with steel, and unfortunately it's still uh, corroded and mainly in presence of salt uh, due to the electrochemical corrosion. And when corroding the steel get expansion, uh, the volume increased by uh, uh, six to 10 times and creating stresses in the concrete and leading to the concrete uh, cracking and spanning and so on. And uh, in sometimes it can create even uh, structural uh, integrity and so on. Uh, this is also another kind of uh, deterioration here. And unfortunately, sometimes here I'm showing you in parking garages, uh, this could even bring uh, failure, as you can see here. As you know, the floor of the parking garage was at this level, and due to the corrosion, uh, this parking collapsed, and um, unfortunately, two, I think, or three people died uh, for this. This was in 2008 in Montreal and Saint Laurent, uh, this case uh, happened. And as you will, you will see later, the solution that we proposed, and also the, the new innovative parking garages that we built during the last few years. And what we are using is um, a material that it does not corrode. Uh, it has very high strength, uh, lightweight, and it's made with the, uh, uh, called with fibers and uh, with uh, polymer, and making it like as composites, because we are starting with two materials, having their own um, um, properties, and by, by combining them together, we are, we are getting new material with improved properties. Uh, but now the thing is, as you know, this material is being used for many years in uh, aeronautic, aerospace, and so on, uh, but it's only during the last 20 years we can see in civil engineering. But to use it, new material in civil engineering, as you know, in the construction is, I can tell you, it's like as a closed medium, uh, and it takes a long time and, and several years because we have to go through testing, we have to go through courts, we have to go for many, many things because the safety is one of the important uh, uh, aspects in this. Uh, so I don't really to talk too much about this kind of material. As you can see here, uh, uh, how it's being made, you can see here the, the fibers. The strength by, the, by this material is mainly by the fibers and the resin is to protect the fibers and to uh, bring the um, uh, durability and the chemical resistance. Uh, this is from uh, microscopy analysis and we can see here uh, there are of course thousands of fibers which making this fiber, this uh, uh, material extremely strong. This is one of the techniques how uh, uh, the FRP bars are being made. This is, I'm showing sure, the protrusion uh, techniques. Uh, we can see here uh, with the fibers, different, different types of fibers are being used, made with carbon, glass, aramid, and uh, essentially with uh, basalt, and uh, this kind of resin. Uh, as you can see here, uh, this is the protrusion machine showing here the, uh, the fibers impregnating, going in the dye, and then producing, we can see the bars. This is one uh, plant I can show you. This is located in Petfer Mines. And we can see here all the pre-tourism machine uh, making this uh, product. Uh, this is also doing uh, all the spas uh, uh, fabricated in this plant. This is one of the uh, company uh, that we worked uh, together during the last few years. And uh, uh, now we are able, of course, to uh, make it with carbon fibers and also with glass. And this company, it's now, it's the largest company making this product in the world, and it's really the most advanced company in the world, too. So we have this one from uh, Quebec. There is also another company from Alberta uh, that I am working work with, and we developed recently uh, a new product. Uh, this is BP Automation, and many other companies also, uh, as I mentioned before, from the world. This is also kind of new product that we recently developed, uh, for piles, for columns, and so on, as you can see here, and also like as shear uh, reinforcement. In fact, I, I, I forgot to mention to you now the, uh, you know, Champlain Bridge in Montreal. This is connecting Montreal to the South Shore. This is the, uh, this bridge is the heaviest in terms of traffic in the North America. Every day, there are more than 160,000 
trucks and cars going over this. And there is now a huge problem with the uh, corrosion of the burdens. And the federal government approved uh, three weeks ago uh, $500 million as in order to restore the, um, the, the, uh, the uh, 100 beams because there are 50 spans in this bridge and all the two exterior beams have to be reinforced with this kind of material, uh, which is showing uh, uh, really the advance that we made. This is also a different project that we, uh, uh, that we also developed and being implemented in field. But as, I, as I'm telling you, uh, it's, uh, we spent really a, a thousand of hours, uh, days and months and so on, uh, to bring this new technology in the field and to be used by engineers and being implemented. As you can see here, some typical uh, applications that we achieved during the last uh, uh, 10 to 15 years. As you can see here, parking garages, this is bridges, uh, this is water treatment plan. Uh, it could be cast in place or it could be uh, precast uh, and so on. Uh, what I achieved in terms of research activities that I, uh, during the last few years is really I look at, uh, first of all, in terms of the material behavior, uh, looking about its degradation, uh, characterization using different uh, 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 chemical solutions as you know to look about the long-term durability and simulating the environment in, in the field and also went through uh, structural testing using uh, uh, large scale uh, structural elements and also uh, doing some field implementation like as pilot project because we need this kind of pilot project as you know uh, to develop data and to, uh, to know more about this material before its implementation and introduction in codes and so on to engineers. So this is showing you all the kind of the research that we achieved and it's really starting from microscopic level to microscopic level. So starting from micro to uh, uh, meters, I can say, or even more than that. Uh, this is kind of uh, in the lab. Uh, this is showing uh, one part of my uh, research labs. Uh, uh, this is mainly a creep system, uh, loading the material. Uh, even more than uh, the expected load in the field and putting chemical solution like as alkaline solution simulating the concrete environment and looking how this material behave in such environment and with more on that and enhancing the behavior and modifying like about the sizing, about the polymer, about the fibers and, and so on. This is kind of the reason. This is also beams on the load and also looking about the behavior. This is also, of course, here in Canada we have uh, the uh, very cold temperature also we simulated about freestyle uh, looking from uh, plus 20 to minus 20 Celsius and looking how this material we have. This is another kind also of uh, research that we did at the material, at the material uh, level. Uh, also as you can see here some bar uh, also looking, uh, investigating the material, uh, the behavior of this material as you know here. This is from SCM analysis. And as you can see here, even through testing, we, we observe this material having very good behavior, as you can see, a very good bond. This is one fiber, and this is the resin, and, the, and you just hear the interface, and you can see here there is no degradation. And some product, some fiber, some other resin that we tested, as you can see here, this is poor bonding, and you can see here some delamination uh, between the fibers and the resin. So we have to avoid such behavior, of course, uh, and this material cannot be implemented in the field. Uh, also, we uh, engineers are asking about how this material will last uh, 50 years, 20 years. So we tried from the accelerating aging test in the lab using elevated temperature and uh, to determine how, uh, like an example here, I'm showing the, how the tensile strength of this material uh, could vary uh, depending on the years. And here I am simulating the behavior of this material in terms of tensile strength, because tensile strength is one of the important criteria of strength to be used in the design for bridges and so on when using this material. And here, as you can see, depending on the... Uh, I, I, I did here the simulation for the Middle East condition, like by having 50 uh, uh, Celsius, like this is like as average uh, uh, annual temperature and also I simulated with Nordic condition about 10 Celsius and even as you can see even even for 100 years or one or 150 years 
we're still well above 70, 75, or 80 percent of the design of the, of the strand. So when we come up with codes, so we define it somewhat called by the uh, strength reduction factors and so on to take into account about this, uh, this behavior. And also we did tests in the lab, but also we, uh, we took advantage about the pilot project that we achieved during the last few years. And then we came to these bridges and we took calls and we did the analysis. As you can see here, uh, we have some bridges, there is one here. Uh, this is harbor, it's mainly with slab and beams. This is in Halifax. Uh, at the time when we did this study by ISIS in 2000, uh, uh, 2004, it was having five years. Uh, there is here um, uh, uh, Joff Bridge. This is the first bridge here in North America, in Canada and US, uh, that I did in 95, which is almost uh, uh, around close to 20 years. And also here in Chatham in Ontario, in Alberta and also in uh, British Columbia, so all across Canada. And we went there, we took calls from these villages, including this material, and we looked at about this behavior, how this material that we implemented in the field, how now is behave, behaving this material on the uh, in-service environment. And we found that this material has no degradation. So uh, this is, we of course, we, we introduced it in the code based on this uh, field research and so on. Also, we achieved um, doing testing, structural testing, using, like here, as you can see here, slabs, simulating also uh, bridge deck uh, panels, like here. This is the same as you are moving uh, with truck uh, under this slab of the bridge deck. You can see here the girders, and here this load is like simulating wheel load. And even we'll go three, four, five times the design load, which is permitted by the Canadian bridge design code. And, and this is really to look about how this material is behaving and what is uh, really the, the performance of this uh, material and the, the potentiality of this material. Also, we did uh, for the parking garage, this is two-way uh, slabs, as you can see them in, in parking garages, and also we tested them on the load. Also, we built piles and piers uh, using this material, and we uh, simulated them on the earthquake uh, cyclic loading and so on, and this is to develop equations uh, and to develop uh, uh, design methodology how to use for using this material. As you can see, this is current project that I have with Hydro Quebec. It's about 2.5 million dollars for three years, and looking to uh, implementing all this in this uh, chambers. This is. Uh, being fabricated by Precaster and bringing them to my lab and testing them because Hydro Quebec would like to change all their design made with steel and changing it with the FRT because they will gain in terms of long term durability and so on. Uh, this is, as you know, the whole structure being tested in, in, in the lab. Uh, of course, all this research, uh, through this research, in terms of material structures, we, uh, we tried uh, uh, during the last few years to develop codes and specifications because to use this material, the engineers need codes and need also specification to have it in the tenders and so on and to design with it. And this is, gives you an idea about the whole work that we achieved during the last few years. As you know, the first code that we did, it was in 2000, okay. As you can see, there were a huge, hundreds of meetings with uh, committee meetings and discussing and uh, we have here from international and here you can recognize my colleague Aftab Mufti. Is Aftab here? Okay, because also he was elected new. new. So uh, I, I, I'm here, I, I look very young compared to now and this is I think it was 10 years ago. <laughs> Anyway, and this is cause that we develop it. And I can tell you, I'm giving seminars everywhere in the world. And even this Canadian codes being uh, uh, selected by uh, and chosen by uh, some other countries, like Australia and some other countries, and adopting them in their own country. And this is due to the, uh, our advance in this area. Uh, here, uh, in, during the last 10 years, uh, I can tell you uh, hundreds of bridges uh, were built using this innovative material. Now I almost convinced all the Canadian Ministry of Transportation from uh, uh, St. John's in Newfoundland to uh, Vancouver in British Columbia and all the provinces they have now the bridges made with this kind of material. As you can see here, giving uh, this is too technical, I'm giving dimension, I'm giving so on and uh, 
Uh, this is kind of the calculation that we can do, as you know, uh, because also I'm being involved in this time. And this is some of the kind of the bridges being bridged. This is, I'm showing one on Highway 20. This is all the people that they traveled from Montreal to Quebec City. They are going on uh, Highway 20 East, and you went over this bridge, um, Valanam Bridge. And so on. This, is, this, this material is very light, uh, so we can, the, the workers uh, can transport more bars for that installation and so on. Uh, this is kind of this. And also we did, as you know, we wanted to know more about the behavior of this material in the field. So we put some sensing using fiber optic sensors. And we uh, did in live, live load testing and long term monitoring and so on. This is, as you can see, the data access system. Uh, this is, was one of the bridge that I, I did, the first bridge in the US. Uh, using this material, I designed it at Sherbrooke, and everywhere, everything uh, was done in Sherbrooke. And I can tell you, really, the things that I am very, very proud. Uh, we are in Sherbrooke, really, uh, I think, the most advanced research group in this area. And the thing that I am very proud is when I have uh, people, many from U.S. and also from Europe, as you know, coming to Sherbrooke. As you know, Sherbrooke is a small city, it's about 150,000. Uh, we have beautiful lakes around uh, mountains. We have very good school, French and English. And there's people, as you know, traveling from U.S. and landing to Montreal, renting car and driving until Sherbrooke one and a half hour and coming to a small city in Sherbrooke, visiting me, visiting my share group and my life. And about this, I am extremely, extremely proud. And many when it's coming from U.S. people, even I'm collaborating with some researchers, but by having that industry working with us, this is because we have something. Otherwise, they will never come to visit us. And this is, I am really very, very proud. And you can, maybe you can talk to my dean on anything, and we have visit every, everywhere, <laughs> anywhere, every time. So this is some other bridges, as you know, I put in the bridges all across Canada, in Ontario, Manitoba, Alberta, and so on. The, we, of course, we, not, we did not focus it on bridges. The corrosion is not only with bridges, there is also with many other structures. Here with the parking garage, this is the, the portage, you know, parking garage in, in, in Gatineau. Um, uh, another parking garage, this is two-way flat slabs. As you know, this is really, it's extremely complex structures and we built with GRFRP. And this is, was the first in the world by doing uh, such structure. Also, we uh, now for the water treatment plant, as you know, the municipalities, Canadian municipalities, have really a huge problem with the corrosion for their water treatment plant. As you know now, even by having, making water drinkable, as you know, because we are uh, many things in the, in the rivers, now even in the municipality they are using very aggressive chemicals, as you know, to make this water. Uh, workable, uh, that, we can, that we can drink it. And now it's creating a huge problem with the concrete and corrosion. And now we are proposing this solution and we did this structures uh, two years ago in Tetfermais, as you can see it here, all is being reinforced with, with FRP. And this is the structures, how it is with this, with this uh, material. Also with one incinerator, uh, incinerator in Quebec City, we did that also with this kind of material, as you can see here. And many, many, many other examples. As you can see here, also application for seawalls. And highway, if this is in Montreal, Highway 40, implementing this material, and so on. This is, you can see. And I would like to conclude, uh, the use of these fibers is really um, uh, bringing really solution to the corrosion problem with the, with the infrastructures. And also application of this were extremely uh, successful. And all the uh, workers are, um, uh, are very, very positive and by, by using this material. And now we achieve it uh, um, uh, many, many structures. And we are, as you know, expanding the service line from 30 years to more than 100 years. And this is really, it's only due to the research that we did in the lab my group and also, of course, other groups also that they work in this area. And I would like to thank you very, very much. Thank you.